fantastic. Uh, so um, Alejandro Sacedo is, um, for, for anyone who hasn't already read his bio, he's the chief scientist at the Institute for, uh, what is this, Ethical AI and Machine Learning. Okay. Uh, leads the development of industry standards on machine learning bias, adversarial attacks, and uh, differential privacy. So this is bound to be um, bound, bound to be an awesome talk, actually. So um, he'll be speaking on. Oh, where am I here? <laughs> What's that? Oh, you got a, you actually got two talks going on at this conference. That's awesome. So this is on uh, real time stream processing for machine learning at a massive scale. So I will turn uh this over to you alejandro and uh have fun awesome amazing thank you very much and uh yeah geez thank, thank you very much for for the uh great introduction as uh, you highlighted tomorrow uh i am uh, also doing another talk i'm doing the keynote which focuses more on the topics that you mentioned around uh responsible development uh, of machine learning and just generally software development but today we're going to be diving into uh, real-time machine learning with Python. Um, so quite an exciting and practical uh, deep dive into a very popular and uh, challenging complex uh, topic. So a little bit about, about myself. Um, uh, my name is Alejandro. I'm the engineering director of Cell and Technologies and chief scientist at the Institute for Ethical AI. I'm also a member at large at the ACM. And uh, today we're going to be delving into the realm of real-time machine learning. Um, just to give you a little bit more about um, uh, my current work. So uh, Selden is an open source, uh, primarily company. Our uh, main open source uh, project has over 2 million installations, uh, massive growth and user base. Uh, please go check it out on GitHub. Um, you know, uh, vanity metric, but you know, has all the GitHub stars and uh, working with quite a lot of uh, uh, large brands, um, um, basically on the mainly what is productionization of machine learning, uh, uh, hence the topic today. And with the Institute, uh, a little bit about that, it's a research center that focuses primarily on uh, the uh, research of uh, topics as the ones mentioned, primarily around the responsible development of the systems through contributions in standards and, and, and uh, regulatory frameworks. So we are actually part of the Linux Foundation, um, which is quite an exciting uh, piece for us, uh, primarily as that allows us to uh, contribute to a lot of the open source uh, uh, initiatives from a very uh, high level and also pragmatic perspective. Uh, but today, yeah, we're gonna be diving into the conceptual introduction of uh, stream processing. We're gonna be delving into uh, uh, the concept of machine learning for real time and how that in itself is, is uh, potentially slightly different. We're going to be diving into some of the trade-offs across the tools available. And then we're going to be covering a hands-on use case uh, that will allow you to get up and running um, with, with this uh, topic. So specifically in regards to uh, what we're going to be uh, doing today is we're going to be uh, fixing the front page of the internet. Right, so what is the front page of the internet, you say, uh, basically Reddit. Uh, we're going to be uh, doing some real time uh, machine learning for Reddit comments. Uh, we basically have a uh, playground where we have 200,000 uh, comments uh, that we will be using to train a model. And these comments come from our science. And uh, the premise of this is that um, these comments and this data set is the comment uh, mod moderation data set. So in turn, these are basically comments that have been removed by moderators. So we're gonna be training a model that, you know, cleans the internet out of, uh, uh, you know, I guess, uh, bad language, et cetera. Um, of course, you know, it's never as easy in such a uh, wild, wild uh, uh, west. So let's take a trip to the past or more specifically a trip to the present. And, uh, uh, more specifically here, you can see in this uh, architectural diagram that this concept of ETL um, is often referred to as, as extract, transform, load. And what it basically means is in the old school, when you have data uh, in a specific space, you would basically want to extract that data, do something with that data and put it back, right? This is the whole concept of ETL. 
Uh, now, from that perspective, ETL is the sort of old school way, traditional way in which uh, most uh, uh, um, uh, sort of data engineering uh, components have been have been tackled. Right, real time is still something that is out of reach for a lot of organizations, and they're still stuck in the batch processing, as it's often referred to. And specifically in terms of ETL, there's variations, right? You have ETL, you have ELT, you have EL, you have LT, you have many, many different variations of, of, of this approach, right? And, and the problem with this is that there's not just one that, uh, 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 that rules them all, right? There's actually a lot of specialized tools that are fit for purpose. And, and some are, you know, a bit more useless than others, but most of them are actually, or a large amount of them are actually very, very specialized where they are very popular or the primary tool for a specific area. So unfortunately, we're, when dealing with not just machine learning, but just general data analytics, um, you have this whole uh, host of different technologies that you have to interact with, different set of uh, uh, patterns that you have to deal with. Now, from, from that perspective, let's have a look at how some of those um, um, terminologies actually fit in regards to the tools. With extract and load, basically moving data around, you have tools like NiFi and Plume, which basically allow you to pipe some of the data from a database to another database, perhaps in another format. What you will see here is that those tools tend to also be a little bit ambiguous because some tend to like um, fall into the category of, of others. You know, for example, NiFi does actually do transformation, even though its, its main um, premise is, 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 is transfer. Uh, uh, then you have in the ETL components, things like Uzi or Airflow, which you most probably have heard of. And then you have an old school ETL where, you, where the human is the T, or the human is the E, the T and the L, right? So that in itself is also a, a concept of ETL. And then you have others like ELT, right? Data warehousing components where you have like an extract and a load and then the actual processing happens in the data in the database itself. Now, um, there's now when we start talking about the future is when we start going in regards to okay, today it's all about well, yesterday was all about batch. Now we need to move into into the streaming world, right? And what what is the difference between um, uh, those two components, right? So we want to dive into what is the what what does that even mean, right? And what that basically means is that ultimately when it comes to batch processing. It's what the name uh, suggests. You actually take a chunk of data and you expect that chunk of data to be processed. Now, in the real time, you would expect at each data point as it comes to be processed. And you can imagine that, you know, if you don't have the infrastructure, that in itself would be much more costly. If you have to like spin up, get everything ready, make sure that everything is there. But fortunately, there's been so many advancements in not only the data processing components, but also in the infrastructure and general computing that has allowed for this real time to be much more of a possible thing. But one of the things is that it's not, it's more often than not uh, uh, batch and streaming, right? You never will find a situation where it's only batch or only streaming. There is a sort of combination of where both of these co components actually fit together. And from that perspective, you would want to have uh, 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 for perhaps certain situations where you want to batch something and then as something else may be coming in, you, you would want to still process it in real time or the other way around. You may want to actually process and clean things as they come and then perform batches on the data that is already stored. And the more interesting thing is that now there is a convergence in both worlds where the APIs that used to be specifically used or the, inter the programmatic interfaces that you used to use as libraries to deal with batch were very different to the ones that you would deal with streaming because they were different components. But new um, uh, uh, sort of uh, work in the field has allowed and enabled for this ab higher abstraction that provides you with the ability to say, well, streaming in a way is just batch processing, but in single data batches. But then you can also have window-based batches, right? And if you take a window that is the size of the entire stream, that in itself is a batch where the entire stream is, is, is a batch, right? So from that perspective, the, the, interf the programmatic interfaces, the SDKs, the libraries are also adopting a sort of like unified interface to deal with both problems. So now let's dive with, into some concepts of, of, of streaming. The first one that I already touched upon is windowing, but then you also have different types of windowing. You have the traditional sort of like 
thumbling windows, which basically says, okay, I'm gonna take a chunk, then that data that was seen in this period will be processed and then the next chunk. But then you also have sliding windows, which means that they're overlapping, right? You're processing data. Uh, and again, you know, you could even say it's batches of data. And in a sense, some systems implement it with batch uh, uh, capabilities, but just running it very uh, uh, often, right? So from that perspective, it's, it's, it's that abstraction again in place. You have another concept called checkpointing. And as the name entails, similar to how you would have it in a game, what checkpointing does is keeping track of the stream progress. And this is important that you have many consumers or many groups of consumers that are consistently being able to like read a specific uh, stream of data. If they suddenly crash, you need to be able to know where did that uh, last actually finish. And because of, and the reason why this is important is because that starts introducing some of the um, terminologies such as you know processing at least once, at most once, or exactly once, right? Do you? And this depends on on how uh, where is the biggest risk for your specific use case, right? So this a lot of things and concepts that right now we're kind of like powering through to just get a bit of insight on them being able to jump into a use case. And there's a little bit more hard, a little bit harder to grasp concept called watermarking, right? Whenever you're talking about windows and you say, I want to basically process data from this window to this window. Well, then the question is, are you talking about uh, the time where the event was generated or the event at the time in which the event came, right? And the reason why this is important is because if you actually say, well, I want to actually do uh, windows of the time in which the event actually uh, was generated, that means that the event may come later, right? So you, you, you may not take it into consideration in that window because even though it was supposed to, it arrived later. What watermarking does, it basically says, I want to make sure that I keep a buffer so that if some things that were supposed to arrive earlier actually come later down the line, I want to take it and including include it into that older batch, right? So that's basically what watermarking is in a simple concept, right? So this is basically some of the high level concepts of streaming. You know, it really it encompasses quite a lot on those. And, you know, once you get your head around it, it starts becoming a little bit more um, 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 intuitive. Of course, there's still kind of like state and all of those things to deal with, but that in itself is, is a good enough introduction to then dive into the next steps. There are multiple different tools that actually tackle and provide you with the ability to do stream processing. Flink, which provides you with multiple languages. They also provide you with the ability to abstract uh, some of those uh, stream processing components. Kafka Streams, which is part of Kafka, is the database that we're going to be using. Spark Streaming, Faust, which is the library, the Python library that, again, we're going to be leveraging to be able to do all of our stream processing. And then other components like Apache and Selden, which we're going to be using for our machine learning. So now let's uh, uh, leveraging today, right? So today we're going to be using this technology. For the stream processing, we're going to store all of the data that comes in on our Kafka queue, right? And the stream processing will be done with FOST, right? The machine learning processing will be served with Core, and our machine learning itself will be done by Scikit-Learn and Space. So we're going to delve into what that looks like. So what does the traditional machine learning workflow look like? Well, so in the traditional machine learning, you take some data, you transform that data, you feed it into a model, you train the model, and then you rinse and repeat. Once you're happy with the accuracy, you persist that model, right? You deploy that model, and then new unseen data comes in, and you get new predictions that basically come into us as it goes, right? So first, you train a model with historical data. And then once you're ready, you persist it, deploy it, new data, new predictions, right? So we don't see data. That's what we're going to be basically doing. So first, we're going to be training a model. What do we have? We have 200,000 comments from angry Redditors. Those comments come in text. We're going to have to first convert those texts into something that the model can like read or learn from. And then we're going to be taking a model that is going to actually uh, um, sort of, we're going to train a model with that specific incoming data, right? What is the model going to try to do? It's going to try to predict on whether that comment would have been uh, moderated or not, right? That's basically what the model is doing. So we basically first, we clean the text, we convert it into a 
um, in this case, tokens. We're going to see what that is. We pass it into it to be converted into a vector. Uh, and then we pass it into our model, which is in this case, a logistic regression model. But what does that even mean, right? In a more intuitive perspective, let's take a um, standard uh, civil uh, Reddit comment, right? Somebody that just wrote, you are a dummy, right? So what happens? First, we clean it, we pass it through the text stream. So that becomes, you are, you are dummy, right? We're removing all of the stop words. Then we tokenize it. What happens there? Well, we convert it into tokens, which in this case, it abstracts some of those pronouns into pron. Then it basically um, performs uh, uh, you know, normalization on our data so that we can actually uh, pass it in a much more standardized way, right? So uh, lemmatization, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? Then we can actually convert it into the vector, uh, through the vectorizer. We then get what I refer to as one hop vectors of which token we have. And then we pass it into our model that gives us a prediction, a one or a zero. A one is basically that it should have been moderated. A zero is that it wouldn't have. It's a very nice comment. And as we would have assumed, this one would have been moderated if you were to pass it through our model, right? And that's actually what happens if you pass it through the model. Um, now, I'm not gonna dive into the very specifics of training the model itself, but one thing that is interesting is we actually, uh, you actually can actually go to the repository and you can see some insights that were uncovered when going through the data set, right? You can see some of the uh, breakdowns of, of, the, of, the, of the type of uh, uh, features that are uh, uh, throughout the data set. You can also see some of the models that were compared, logistic regression, LDA, K nearest neighbors, et cetera, and how they performed. So if you're curious, please do go check it out. Now, we have a trained model, right? So we managed to basically what I mentioned here is we have this repo. In this repo, you can find uh, the contents of all of the data analysis. If you're curious, uh, do check it out. So right before I actually go into the next uh, um, slide, I just want to confirm. Can you uh, hear me well now? Yeah, we're good. Okay, cool. Yeah, I have the VPN. Um, yeah, so again, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be taking that model that we already deployed, uh, that we already trained, and we're going to deploy it, right? We're going to put it in production. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to need the, 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 the next few components, right? We're going to need the stream processing components that are going to be moving data around. We're going to need our queue that are basically going to be storing all of the streaming data in what are referred to as topics. So each topic actually stores a set of messages, right? So that's basically how our stream is going to be managed. And then we're going to have this serving component, which is going to be serving our model. And we're going to see how each of those uh, get generated, right? But first, we're going to see the flow. What we're going to have is a stream of data that is coming in, Reddit comments, that basically our stream processor will be taking in and then pushing into the queue, into the first topic called Reddit stream, right? Our then next uh, 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 stream processor is going to be listening to that next topic and is going to be, as soon as one arrives, we're going to take that message and we're going to push it into both, uh, first, the prediction API to you know, see whether that comment should be moderated or not based on the prediction. And then on the response, we're going to be basically send it to our topic where all of the responses are stored. And then if it's a, you know, should be moderated prediction, we're going to send it to the topic of alert, right? So that's basically what we're going to be doing. Let's dive into each of the components. So specifically first into the Reddit source, right? So to generate uh, Reddit comments, we're going to be leveraging FOST. In FOST, once you create the uh, app component, so if you've used uh, uh, Flask in the past, it basically is something as simple as app equals you know, FOST initialization and the location of your queue. That's basically it. Once you have the app, you can define as a decorator exactly what are the functions that you want to be running, right? Specifically, this one is not going to be working on the queue. It's just going to be running every 0.1 seconds, right? So it's just going to be iterating. What it's going to be doing is going to fetch a Reddit comment. It's going to create the data, and it's going to then push it into the Reddit stream topic, right? So uh, app.topic, Reddit stream, send, right? So that's basically going to send it to the Reddit stream. Then it's going to uh, go uh, into developing the ML predict. Again, app.agent, we're going to create a topic. 
vetted stream. It's listening to that stream that we just created. And all of the tokens are going to be coming in. So the actual comment is going to be coming in. We're going to then send it to sell them. That's basically the next thing I'm going to show. Then we're going to get that response, whether it should be moderated or not. And then we're going to be sending it to the prediction topic. And if the probability is higher, we're going to be sending it to the alert topic. Right? So that's basically what this one does. Then we're going to be actually serving our model. How do we actually serve our model? That prediction function, that prediction function that you saw here, what that prediction function is, is basically a REST client that uses the Selden client to send a request, right? So this is basically a, just sending a prediction request, right? So the prediction request is to that URL, which is inside of the cluster. And the response basically is what is going to be uh, forwarded um, with, the, with the predictions, right? And what does that look like with Selden model serving? That's basically taking that code that we just uh, trained and convert it into a fully fledged microservice, right? What that basically looks when you wrap models with Selden, you create a Python class. Everything you put on the predict function is basically what is exposed in the RESTful API, right? So in this case, we are actually passing the input to our model, right? So if you remember that model that we trained before, it's basically just going through all of the steps and returning the predictions. So anything that you send to the request API basically gets passed through all of those uh, steps and then it gets returned, right? And that's basically what that component does, right? So you, you basically send the request uh, to here that basically gets passed through this predict function that basically goes into the transforms and then returns what our model predicted, right? So that's how, how Selden uh, wraps models, right? So that, that's how you can actually um, do it. Now, specifically in regards to that flow, let's just kind of like recap of what happened there. Uh, a new comment comes in, right? We created a, a stream processor that is just listening, um, uh, that is just actually fetching comments and then pushing them into the Reddit stream topic. Then we have another stream processor that fetches everything from the Reddit streams and then sends it for prediction as a RESTful API. And then all of the predictions get pushed to the prediction topic and all of the, um, um, all of the predictions that are, uh, you know, higher than 1%, uh, sorry, higher than uh, a percentage of probability or that they're predicted that they should be uh, um, moderated, then they get sent to the alert topic, right? So, so that's basically, that's basically it, right? And, and ultimately the code require is this basically to wrap your model and containerize it. So that's basically how you, how you uh, build your own sort of like server uh, for the models. You need basically the components that you know receives uh, the raw uh, comments and sends them to that uh, machine learning service, right? And then you need just the thing that basically is continuously collecting Reddit comments, right? And if you actually like take a look at the uh, at the repository, this probably would be much more intuitive uh, because you can actually try it yourself, right? I, I think I think that's that's the main thing. One thing to mention is that. Uh, one of the things that we're doing uh, with, with, with Selden is actually simplifying the way that uh, Selden works, right? Because right now you need a stream processor to listen to the input data, send it as a request, and then you know, push that into the next topic, right? So that, that's basically how it, it, it was kind of like the main push. Right now we're actually uh, releasing in um, the uh, sort of open source repo, the ability to not just expose the RESTful API, but to be able to connect directly to Kafka. And this is quite interesting because this allows you to basically deploy your model and uh, consume topics directly and then push to topics directly. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's something that we're currently working on. Uh, for the community, you know, we would love to, to hear any sort of feedbacks. It's currently an open PR, so uh, do feel free to, to, to come in and uh, uh, definitely um, uh, add your thoughts uh, or anything. And you know, we, we definitely always welcome um, any sort of contribution, whether it is just on the um, thoughts or even if it is on uh, suggestions or comments in there. So with that, uh, I think we've managed to go through all of the, the core components. We managed to cover a conceptual introduction to stream processing. Uh, we've managed to dive into the concept of real-time uh, uh, machine learning, uh, given that uh, that nuance of having to train the model. And then we've discussed some of the trade-offs uh, across some of the, the different 
uh, uh, concepts and terminology and, and type of uh, stream processing uh, um, approaches, together with the hands-on use case uh, to tackle the challenge of, um, I guess, angry people in, in the internet. And with that said, uh, 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 thank you very much. And uh, you know, I'll be on the on the Discord. Um, uh, we have the the, the 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 talk which you can find. Uh, I think if you search uh, for streaming, uh, and then if you have any sort of questions or any ideas for extensions into this, uh, more than keen to actually delve into into, into some of that. Uh, so with that, I'll I'll, I'll pause that and um, I'll pass it over uh, back to Jason. Thank you very much, Alejandro. Excellent talk. So like he said, uh, please uh, check out uh, his room over there in Discord. Um, and uh, you can uh, it just in Discord, just hit Control K, type in the name of the talk and, and uh, or part of the name of the talk, you'll find it and you can ask him questions there. So uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us.